Hey guys, welcome back to Maximo's Mind of God. Today I thought I'd do another video for you, take a break from my other stuff I'm doing right now, because um, I don't get to make the videos a lot, so I figured I'd give you a double whammy today. Um, today also I've been wanting to do this one for a while, um, determinism versus free will. That's a very interesting concept, something I think that's needlessly argued. I mean, it's, 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 ultimately it's cool to, it's good to argue maybe a thousand years ago when people were really trying to figure stuff out you 2000 years ago, but, um, it, it should already have been laid to rest because it's, it, it needs to be time to move on into other, other realms, other, um, things of exploration, you know, to be more productive because th this issue, um, it's, it's pretty easy to solve. Uh, you don't, in other words, I think it's a waste of time to continue to argue about this determinism versus free will. Um, when, when you could already, if you understand what I'm going to tell you, you could already go after that from that point afterwards and maybe find, you know, some, some, uh, productive thinking that goes beyond this argument. So, uh, I'll just go ahead and start there. What I've done is I've just, you know, broken this in half, determinism, free will. The argument has been there for decades, whether we actually have a choice in matters or whether we're kind of like at the whim of, of the laws of physics and, uh, you know, it's all it has to do with science and, and stuff like that, or as far as, um, it's determined. In other words, you don't have a choice. You're going to do what you're going to do regardless of what you think. And, and they even go so far to say the people that support determinism that if you could actually take into account every, you know, piece of matter there is in energy, you could, you could predict the future or whatever and, uh, calculate everything that's going to happen. And then the free will, you know, basically, well, that's what determinism is. If you don't have a choice, everything is just like a roller. It's, it's like a billiard ball is hitting one after the other. It's set in motion, and that's just the way it is. Whereas free will posits that we have some kind of independent existence from the physical world or some kind, something like that. And so you actually kind of reach into your mind and can affect outcomes that are otherwise unpredictable. So you have power, in a sense, over what happens it's not just given the laws of physics and such. And so basically what, what they have here is this is determinism. This is free will right here. And um, actually, they're both wrong. I'm just going to say that right off the bat. And, I, and I'll go over the, I don't want to make this video too long. I'll explain why. Okay, the reason why, first we'll start off with free will. The reason why that, that is in a sense wrong is because for this to even be plausible, there would have to be a separation of mind from... Um, from something else. So in other words, what you call yourself, or let's say your soul or your person would have to be something different from what you call your mind. Okay. And the mind would also have to be something different from what we call the physical world. It would have to be some different kind of fabric, some different kind of actual substance. And if you go watch my video, everything is mind um, or, um, well, that's the main one that touches on it. It'll show you that you know, there is no separation, whether you want to call it physical reality or, or mental reality. It's all has everything that you experience, even if it comes down to, to um, seeing somebody die, watching yourself bleed and getting cut, you know, stubbing your toe, you know, um, you know, laughing, pain, pleasure, watching an airplane fly by, smell, any everything that there is that you can experience. Um, is mind. It's, it has to do with the senses, whether it's going to be an idea or a sensation. You know, um, even even when you go as a scientist, let's say, and verify some existence without you being there, like uh, making an observation of some particle in, in another room, you still relies on all. It still relies on all of your senses and consciousness for that to even be there, because you would not be able to have set up the machines without the the sensation of sight your hands to build, you know, um, your, you know, ears to hear others communicating with you, you know, your, your ideas to calculate the mathematics and engineering, everything you're doing, even when you, when you're not there, you, you, you can't actually verify that there's actually an experiment going on unless you're there, unless you have some kind of conscious connection to it. So whenever you get the, let's say the video playback, your mind or your eyes, your vision is watching the video. It all takes your mind to, to prove any of that stuff. So when you get down to the actual truth, it's all sensation and idea. The physical world could just as well be called the mental world because it's all relying on the sensations and the ideas that we have. So it's all one and the same. And when you're talking about a soul or a, um, a spirit, 
what do we mean by that? If you stop and think about it, your soul is just something you feel, and that's all. And feeling has to do with an idea or a sensation. Some of the feelings are subtle, like you just know that you have a soul. But that just feeling of knowing is also mental. It's it's a it's a it's a conscious reality. So so even your ideas and feelings of soul, you know, out of body experiences are still experiences of consciousness. So you never escape that. Whether you're talking about the physical world or the or your feelings of soul or conscious or idea, it's still mind. It's all mind. And so there's so that that's why this one can't be right because for you to have like some kind of ethereal or extra like spirit outside of what you consider yourself, that it doesn't work. No matter how hard you try to think that, even you thinking that is still your conscious mind thinking that. So you're not getting out of it. So there's no separation. Therefore, there's no free will because there's no outside agent. There's no way to be outside of everything. You're always part of everything. That is your mind. Everything you're doing here, you watching me, I am your mind right now experiencing me. So there's no way to get out. If you turn around, you experience whatever that is. You know, so, so there is no separation. You have to sit there. If you want to take a minute and reflect on that, try to have, try to, how would you even know or experience an experience that's not experienced, that's not, con you're not conscious of. It, it just doesn't make any sense. So there, so there is no um, free will in that sense. Determinism is wrong on that, on that in, the, in its own way because it totally relies on there being something that's actual called time and cause and effect, which I also touch on on uh, my other um, video about the uh, creationism, you know, versus evolution. But uh, basically, there is no time. So once, so right now is the present, and that's the only thing that's real. Any ideas of past and future, you know, um, they're simply that they're present ideas had right now. That, that have different flavors or feelings. So right now, if I think of the past, it has a certain tone to it. Right now, if I think of the future, it has a certain tone to it. And no matter what I do, it's always a present experience. So there is no actual time that doesn't exist, okay? Even even old fossils, whatever, um, you know, whatever you want to bring up, you're still going to be a, a presently experiencing everything. And if you want to see more on that, check out The Truth About Time. There's another video I have on my channel. So without time, you can't have cause and effect because because there would have to be an actual past and an actual present for like a to, to this ball to strike this ball. So there really is no causal link between anything. And another way, what I've heard argued before is that, and then it does make sense. Whatever energy that one, let's say, item A carries before it intercedes with item B or affects it, and, and then there, and we call it an energy transfer. So science or mechanics, physics say. That, that at a certain velocity and certain, um, you know, magnitude or momentum, it has a certain energy. And when it impacts another object, it transfers this energy. Well, therein lies the problem because there's no way to actually prove that whatever this energy is, is actually sharing that energy with the, this ball. It could be that this has its energy and th this object simply, when whenever this came into some kind of proximity, the energy in this one just spontaneously decided to move, okay? In other words, what I'm saying is there's no way to show that you have one and the same energy going from here to here and not that they each have their own energy and they just somehow act that way and make you think there's actually a transfer. Well, nobody even really knows what energy is, so there's no way to even show what that means. The only way we know what energy is is by watching objects move. And so how do they move? They move with energy, but what is energy? They're moving or measuring on a scale. So it's one of those things that, that, that really no one knows. And so to say that the energy from A affected the energy from B is, is unfounded. It's not provable. You can only say that A has energy and then, and then now B has energy. That's all you could say. You cannot link them. There's no real way to logically link those. And so also when you take away the fact that there is no time, past or future, then you can't even show that A at some point contacted B. Because now you can think it, you can watch it on a video recording, you can watch uh, even electron tracks when you're looking at atoms, but that is happening presently. So there is no real past. So therefore, there is no real cause at all, and no, and, and there's only the uh, there's only the now, the effect or whatever. So there's not really any causal link between things, and so the determinism can't be right then. 
because it relies on time and cause and effect, and those are uh, those are uh, mental fallacies. They're illusions. They're not real. Okay, so they're both wrong in that sense. But the, but in a way, so what is the truth then? Do we do we really make choices or not? Is it determined or whatever? Well, the way it lays down is a combination of the two. We we do not make a choice as if we're something separate from what we experience. Okay, so we cannot like pre decide. Whatever I decide right now is the only thing I can decide. So let's say I'm saying yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. I can decide. But as soon as you do something, that is your decision. You really didn't have a choice because whatever you do is the only thing that's real. So that's the key. Whatever you do is the only possibility. And you say, well, no, because I could have done this. No, you didn't. Whatever you do is what's real. And if you do something else, that's real. And if you do something else, that's real. So there is no could have done. There's only what is. There's only what exists, what is done. And and it's and it's even as far as the so but does that mean that it's all determined though? Since you since whatever is simply is what it is, does that mean that it's predetermined? No, because pre would mean that there was some kind of future and there is no future. So it's not predetermined, nor is there really a causal cause and effect link. So they're really so honestly. There's nothing that causes you to do that either. There's only the present moment. So determinism, nothing is determined either. You know, so what does that mean? It basically is hard. It's kind of a tricky concept. But what it means is that whatever is happening at this present moment is the only reality without cause, without, you know, future, without past, without future. Now, this is the only reality. So you basically have not been caused by anything, nor do you cause anything. In a sense, it's almost like an eternity. It's like a, it's like a, it's like an existence the size of almost nothing, wherein everything is. And that's a kind of crazy concept. It's, I mean, it's a big idea, but reflect on it a minute. And, 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 and if you ever do kind of realize that, it's, it's pretty amazing because we do not have a past, nor do we have a future, but yet here we are in this crazy reality, this existence. And so neither of these are correct, but Neither do we have a choice, nor are we determined. We simply exist as one present reality, and it's so I think it's so amazing. So, uh, if you have any other comments, you know, you can go to my website and um, maximosmindofgod.com, or leave me a comment on YouTube and reflect a little bit, hear what I'm saying, and uh, maybe it'll make sense to you. Anyways, thanks for uh, stopping by. If you like this, share it, and um, we'll see you again soon. Thanks.